Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Electrokinetics and today's topic of discussion is Cyclic Voltammetry. Cyclic Voltammetry, commonly known as CV, is a useful electrochemical characterization tools. In most of the electrochemical experiments, people use Cyclic Voltammetry. Although there are other characterization tools in electrochemistry and those are EIS that is electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, chronoamperometry or similar. But most useful technique is cyclic voltammetry and today we will be talking about how exactly we can model cyclic voltammetry using COMSOL. Before we start our discussion on modeling part, let us, let us know something about the fundamentals of cyclic voltammetry because this is very important. I will recommend two papers which are important to read if you are working, if you are starting work with cyclic voltammetry. One paper is published in Chemical Education, the very important paper. I have followed this paper and I learned many things about cyclic voltammetry. And based on that, we also wrote a paper on cyclic voltammetry using COMSOL and that paper is given as a preprint on ResearchGate, I will be sharing the link in the description box so you can consult both the papers and I hope it will give you some idea of cyclic voltage. So let's go ahead. So initially let us look at the chemical education paper. So the paper is on a practical beginner's guide to cyclic voltammetry and this paper is widely cited people who are working in cyclic voltammetry electrochemistry they already know about this paper so if you are new to this field then i will recommend you read this particular paper so initially i will talk few things about cyclic voltammetry so uh, in this paper they talk about the convention of oxidation and reduction so i'll come into that there are two conventions we generally use this convention that is uh, the top one is oxidation and the bottom one is reduction. Now what is the top one and the and what is the bottom one I will come in a second but let us as of now let us understand there are two conventions and you should not be confused about these two conventions. So whenever you read a paper try to try to visualize it which convention they have followed. But again, I'm telling most of the times the top one is oxidation and the bottom one is reduction and that is the UPAC convention and we generally use this. Now, let me show you a particular diagram which will talk about the cyclic voltammetry process. So what happens when uh, we do a cyclic voltammetry? So the setup is something like this. So we have the picture of the setup here. Uh, this is our paper which we have uploaded on ResearchGate. So in a vessel or we call a electro, an electrochemical reactor, we put three electrodes. So this is a three electrode system. One is your counter electrode, working electrode and reference electrode. So working electrode is the most important electrode because the reaction happens there whatever electrochemical reaction you are carrying that has to happen on top of the working electrode and that is why the name working. Now the reference electrode is from the name itself it is referring something so it is basically referring a constant potential. So when you dip this particular reference electrode in an electrochemical solution then the potential around that electrode becomes constant uh, even after the chemical reaction goes on. Meaning, suppose you have dipped a particular electrode and it is showing a voltage say 0.23 volt. So it will remain 0.23 or nearly 0.23 throughout your experiment even before and after your reaction. And that is why it is very important because whenever we measure voltage, we basically measure the voltage in reference to this re reference electrode. Now what is the purpose of the counter electrode? It's kind of a short circuiting. What does it mean? 
when when the reaction goes on on the working electrode it accumulates or releases a bulk amount of electrons and through this counter electrode those huge amount of current can be passed and that is the purpose of using a counter electrode so this is a three electrode system so you can say this counter electrode is a kind of earthing in normal electrical circuit so whatever the earthing does in a normal electrical circuit similar thing is done by the counter electrode now let me talk about the reaction what happens so we basically apply potential so this is the working electrode so on the working electrode we basically apply potential so we may apply positive potential we may apply negative potential but what basically we do is we we actually in we keep increasing a potential on that particular electrode and then we keep diminishing the potential so when you suppose you are adding a positive potential here so the electrode will remain positively charged so it will be attracting the negative ions so the negative ions will come and then negative ion will be in touch with the working electrode and on the working electrode some chemical change is expected to happen so let me show this particular diagram because uh, i can explain better using this particular diagram suppose we initiate from here so we apply a negative voltage on the working electrode initially and then what we do we keep on increasing the i mean the magnitude will decrease so basically this is the change over point so you can see so this is negative so it is like this so this say so this is time this is potential so we have a negative more negative potential here and this is more positive potential so we go from more negative to positive again we come back from more positive to more negative so as we go along this way so this is you can see this particular part so this is we are going toward the positive so this is we are going towards positive voltage if you see this is more negative this is more positive so in this way we basically go towards more positive and in this way we basically go towards more negative so when we are going towards more negative then this particular chemical reaction happens that is o plus any so this is basically reduction because addition of electron is reduction and in this case when we go from more negative to more positive so in this case this is basically oxidation so here so what they have shown on the top what happens this is your reduction now reduction of what reduction of the species so if we talk in terms of the species it is reduction but if we talk in terms of the electrode so when this reduction happens where from this electron comes this electron basically comes from the electrode surface so if this is the electrode surface this electrode releases electron and that electron is utilized to add with the o and give you a redox product r so in terms of electrode electrode loses electron so the electrode gets oxidized so when as per the eupa convention we basically think about what's happening in the electrode and that's why we can say this is oxidation but don't be confused you just try to think properly so what is happening so uh, i'll just try to make it more clear so 
when you going this way so what is happening you are going towards more negative so when you are going towards more negative so your electrode has more electrons so if when the electrodes have more electrons it it is very prone to donate electron and donating electrons means it those electrons will come here and do this reaction so the, if you can understand this physical concept then your understanding of oxidation and reduction in a cyclic voltammetric peak will be very easier i will upload more videos in a separate series i will create a separate series on cyclic voltammetry and i will talk more about this in that particular series so now uh, we little bit learned about the cyclic voltammetry now let us look at the paper from the acs so here they have shown the similar thing so you can see they have also shown a similar cyclic voltammetric process this is the peak current and what reaction is going on here they have shown similar to the figure i have shown and this is the setup we have three electrodes we have already shown so you go through this paper you will learn many things from this particular paper now i go to comsol let me show you how to model it so basically this particular file will be available in application library but i thought of making the demonstration so it becomes easier to comprehend so basically for cyclic voltammetry we need to choose we need to go to add physics and we need to choose electroanalysis so electroanalysis is a physics that is built for this purpose only so comsol has built this physics so it is available in comsol but in generic term there is no physics called electroanalysis they have they have actually customized it so that we can use it for cyclic voltammetric calculations so i'll show you what are the equations available here so this is nothing but if you see this is chemical species transport along with this reaction now the important thing is here in the reaction is not a homogeneous reaction it will be a typical heterogeneous reaction happening on the solid electrode surface so it is a two phase chemical reaction solid electrode catalyst and liquid reagent so on the interface those reaction is happening and this reaction term you have to add by right clicking here so you have to you have to take the electrode surface one so while you take the electrode surface you have to define where is your electrode so this is being done in a one dimensional case so the left hand side is considered to be the electrode whereas the right hand side is considered to the bulk solution so when you take this electrode you get this electrode reaction and if you right click here you also put double layer capacitance because your electrode may have a, a strand layer and that strand layer can put some capacitance so what's a strand layer so when you dip a particular charged surface into an electrolytic solution immediately a single layer of ions becomes immobile on top of that surface and throughout the course of your process that layer never goes off and this particular layer is called strand layer and we due to this depositions a particular electrochemical double layer capacitance developed around the electrode and this one is given here so they have actually jotted down this one as cdl so let me change it to cdl now what is happening on the electrode reaction this is the most important thing this chemical reaction heterogeneous reaction is governed by butler volmer kinetics so this is very important in in connection with the electrochemistry i will not i'm not going to talk much about this butler volmer kinetics for the time being so 
but we will actually talk about it in some other video because butler volmer kinetics is a lengthy one to understand that is why i am not covering in details in this particular video but i'll talk briefly about this butler volmer kinetics so it basically gives you the current uh, that is that is coming due to the chemical reaction on the electrode surface and that chemical reaction is happening as a heterogeneous electric heterogeneous fashion and if you look at this particular equation there are multiple terms uh, there are concentrations of cations and anions it depends on the cathodic and anodic transfer coefficient what are those parameters i will talk in some other video it also de depends on the activation energy so what is an activation energy for any kind of reaction to happen it has to reach up to a certain energy level and beyond that energy only reaction happens and that we call activation energy so those terms are available in uh, so it is basically calculating this i and that i is nothing but giving you the cyclic voltammetric plot so you are calculate, calculating i for different potential throughout your cathodic and anodic sweep or you have basically in cyclic voltammetry it's a cyclic process because from a minus negative we go to plus and then again from the plus we come back to that minus negative voltage and it keep keep on going in a cyclic manner and that is why cyclic voltammetry so we keep uh, they have chosen the reference current density here will use that so this is the reference current density which they have chosen uh, they means comsol they, this is available in the application library so we'll be using that reference current here okay so yeah this is the insulation initial concentration so initial concentration okay so initial concentration the they have actually given so for c1 this would be the initial concentration and for the c2 this would be the initial concentration so they have considered this initial concentration you can also choose a different initial concentration so insulation is given electrolyte there is no u because there is no flow we have not considered any flow so this diffusivity can be different you can choose uh, as per your wish if they have given some diffusivity say da and db that we can use so in the electrolyte we will use it as da and this one as db so we have defined the electrolytes we have defined insulation, we have defined initial concentration, we have defined electrode surface. So I guess most of the things are defined. Let me try to simulate. So we are simulating for a parametric sweep. So in the parametric sweep, what we have changed, we have changed the scan rate. So where is the scan rate? This is the scan rate. Scan rate means per second how much increment of voltage you are allowing that is the scan rate scan rate is a very important parameter in my paper which is there on research gate we have talked more about the scan rate uh, so you can go through that paper and you can learn about the scan rates i guess most of the things are done so the study you have to take cyclic voltammetry so again they have customized a particular study exclusively for cyclic voltammetry if you right click you can see if you right click here if you go to the study steps you can see uh, there will be some somewhere it will yeah you can see in the time dependent this is cyclic voltammetry so we have chosen that so now let's try to simulate if anything is wrong we can again come and rectify but i hope things are properly defined and it will work yeah the simulation is running 
there might be plots let us see some okay undefined variable ca yes, some problem uh, where it is undefined let me check okay okay we need to define a concentration uh, in the bulk that we have not defined maybe so we right click uh, we choose the option concentration so there would be some option concentration let's look for that electrolyte okay initial values we can choose no initial value has been chosen already okay I got it uh, so in the electrolyte there is concentration yeah under electrolyte so we choose it at the bulk you define both CA and CV CA would be CA which is already defined in the or C bulk is not CA it is C bulk let me put it as C bulk yeah now I hope things are defined let me run the simulation once again okay it's running it will take some time to finish yeah almost over yes and now it is done you can see this is the cyclic voltagrams for different scan rates so we have run simulations for different scan rates why exactly the current is changing for different scan rates that you can actually calculate from uh, there is an equation which is called uh, I'll show you the equation it is given here in this paper so how the current will depend on several parameters we have a equation this is called Randall Sefcik e equation so here you can see uh, there is a scan rate term here and IP is proportional to the square root of the scan rate that means if you have higher scan rate you have higher current so let us just check so uh, say this one is for higher scan rate maximum scan rate and we have maximum current here and you also see this is not linear increment or decrement this is basically changing with respect to the square root of the scan rate so like that way you can also see other concentration plots and all how exactly concentrations are changing so if I go to the last time step so this is the way the concentration is changing so if I just explain this is the concentration of yeah this is CA so what is happening if I just choose one particular scan rate say last scan rate we choose so you can see uh, initial concentration was 1 so what is happening as we go towards the x coordinate initially near the electrodes concentration of C1 is higher if the concentration of C1 is higher it is obvious that the concentration of C2 or CB will be lesser you can see it is the opposite relation because uh, CB if CB is negative that means uh, the electrode is also negative and that is why the negative negative repels and that's why the concentration of CB is less similarly CA has an opposite charge so near to the electrode it has higher value and it goes down and again reaches to the bulk concentration after a certain distance so I have not explained everything about the concentration current and all I'll keep on uploading videos where I will be talking about these aspects uh, in detail as I have mentioned I'll be uploading a separate series on cyclic voltammetry so today I stop here I hope this video was helpful if so kindly subscribe to our channel share our videos and it will give us motivation to upload more videos thank you